Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are making Halloween costumes because Halloween is in a week from when I'm starting to record this. So let's hope I finish everything in time. But I finally got my brothers to agree to do a group costume with me. So I'm really, really excited about this year. And we are going to go as the Over the Garden Wall gang. So I'm going to be Greg, my older brother is going to be Wirt, and then my little brother is going to be Jason Thunderburger the Frog. So it's going to be a good time. And I dragged them out to Joanne's with me yesterday and we bought lots and lots of materials. Um, actually three bags of materials. So I don't think I'm going to be going through all of it right now. But we have some very fun stuff to play with today. And of course, like everybody does with Halloween, I'm going to be using as many pieces as I already have as I can. So I'm not going to be making every single piece, but there are some really, really fun things I'm going to be making, like capes and teapot hats and bloomers. So it should be a really, really fun project, and I'm really, really excited about it. So I think it's time to get working. And the first thing I'm going to start off with making is Wurt's cape. And for this, I'm going to be using this curtain that I actually got from a friend and this red fabric that I got from Joanne's as a lining. And honestly, I've never made a cape before, but they're not very hard, so I'm really, really excited about this. Oh yeah, and also, I'm back in my parents' house this weekend. So this is not my new place, by the way, but I wanted to start the video now. So the background is probably going to be changing, but let's just roll with it. <laughs> We're going to be making this cape pretty much the same way that we make our circle skirts by just folding this square piece of fabric in half and then measuring out a circle from one point all along the fabric. And for this measurement, I made mine 50 inches because that's what fit my brother the nicest. So I just measured 50 inches from that corner all the way around and cut it out. And then for the top little corner, I measured out five inches and cut that out to fit around his neck. And so I cut two of those out of my blue fabric and then I cut two of those exactly the same way out of my red lining fabric. And I ended up being a tiny bit short on my fabric, so I just pinned a section of fabric to where I needed a little bit extra length and then kept cutting out my fabric. And we'll sew those pieces up in just a few minutes. And I decided to work on Wirt's hat at the same time. So for this, I'm using a really stiff interfacing that I got from Joann's. And this is what's going to hold the shape. So I just folded this into kind of a cone shape and cut it out and just fixed it a few times until it fit around his head nicely. And this is the shape that I ended up with. And then once I was happy with that, I just traced the same exact shape onto my red fabric again, making it a little bit longer so that I have a little bit of room to fold over that edge. Alrighty, we've got our pieces for our cloak cut out and now we are going to start sewing them all up. And the first things that I have to sew up are actually the lining pieces because as you guys saw, I didn't have quite enough fabric to get the full piece. So I had to add on these little extension pieces that are going to be on the back side. So I'm just going to sew these together really quickly. And now that these are into one big piece, I'm going to take our two front pieces and sew them together down one of the side seams. Um, for this one, I'm going to do the ones that have these extensions so we don't actually see them. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the blue pieces too. Oh yeah, this is already so stinking cool. And now I'm going to cut a rectangular piece that fits into the top of the cloak here. And mine is 18 inches by five inches and I just folded it in half like this. And I'm going to just sew it across these edges here. And I'm going to clip the little top edges here and then turn this piece right side out again. Now I'm going to take the top edge here and I'm going to pin our collar down on top of it like this all the way across and then put a basting stitch across this edge to hold it in place. And we're going to leave the collar flipped down right now and we're going to bring the lining piece and we're going to pin these pieces pretty side to pretty side and we're going to sew them together around all of the edges but I'm going to leave a small hole at the bottom so we have somewhere to turn this right side out. turn this right side out through the space that we left open. And with this much fabric, it does take a minute. And then once it's turned out, I'm just going to hand stitch this little space up. All right, we are almost done with this cloak and we just have to add on the buttons. And so we got these ones from Joann's and I think they're really perfect for this. And then I also cut out this kind of oblong shape and we're going to use this to keep the cape closed. So I'm just going to space out where I want these buttons and I'm 
thinking something like that. And I'm just going to mark these out so that they are all evenly spaced. And then I'm just going to start hand stitching them on. And we're going to be putting buttons on both sides, so I'm going to make these even. And so I think I'm just going to sew the first two so that I can do the next step. And then I'm going to leave the rest to my brother so that he can put a little bit of effort into his costume too. So I cut down the little oval just a little bit so it's a little bit smaller when we put it here. And now I'm just going to sew around the edges, leaving a little opening again. And then I'm just going to turn this piece right side out. And I'm going to take this little piece now, and I'm going to add buttonholes to either side of it. And now I'm just going to loop this over either button to give it a closure. Ta-da! I made a cloak! I'm so excited. And all it needs is the other buttons down the sides, but Asa says he's gonna do those, so I'm gonna leave that up to him. And I think we should tackle Ward's hat next. Ward's hat is super, super easy because we're just going to take the red triangle piece, fold it in half, and sew down this edge. And then the rest is going to be hot glue. Okay, my glue gun is all heated up, and basically I'm just going to take this piece and fold it over and glue these two edges together, basically like we do with the red pieces. And now that the shape of this is the way I want it, I'm going to put the red one on top. And I'm just going to fold these edges over like this and glue them down on the inside. And there we have Ward's silly little hat. Alright, and since the hot glue gun is heated up, I think we're going to tackle the teapot next. And I am so freaking excited about this, but I honestly have no clue how this is going to work. So I'll show you guys what I've got. So my plan is to use a bunch of craft foam to make the teapot. It's going to be a mixture of gluing and carving. So I think I'm going to build it with this being the base, putting this on top, and then this little round one for the lip, and cutting off the top of the dome piece, and then using this to do the little like spout and handle. I'm really hoping this works. Wait, it looks really good. Ah, it looks so good! <laughs> Sophie's not impressed. I also have these like toothpick things I think I'm going to put in for like extra stability. It looks like a weird little mushroom. I think I'm going to carve down the sides a bit so that it goes down lower on this maybe. Okay, well this is pretty much the base I'm going to be working with, so now I'm just going to start carving the top of it, and I also need to carve in the bottom so there's actually a space for my head. Not great, but not terrible. I might go back and try to smooth it out some more later because it is a bit rough, but I think I'm going to start carving out the bottom. Okay, I have a lot of foam in my hair, but like we've got something here. It looks like a weird little chef hat right now, but it's a start. <laughs> All right, now we've got to make the handle and the spout. <laughs> I've actually done quite a bit of carving before, but honestly, I've never carved foam before and it's a little bit funkier than I was expecting it to be. So I tried to paint the teapot with just some gray paint. Honestly, I think it looks really ugly. So I found this air dry clay that I think I'm going to cover this with a really thin coat of. And that way I can get a really smooth texture and make it look a lot nicer. Okay, today we are tackling Greg's shorts. 
Um, and this fabric I also got at Joann's a while ago because I actually bought it to just make a regular pair of shorts, not these kind of bloomer things. Um, so I only have a yard of it, which I'm really hoping is enough. And honestly, every single time I've watched Over the Garden Wall, I like have wanted to just make Greg's bloomers so bad. So I'm really looking forward to this. So for these shorts, because we're going to be ruffling them quite a bit, they really don't have to be perfect. I'm just going to be drafting like the most basic shorts pattern. I just want to make sure that it's a bit on the big side so we have enough to ruffle. So here is the front piece I'm going to be using and I cut two of these. And then here's the back piece, and again, I cut two of these. And then I'm just going to use the rest of my fabric to cut out waistband and his little suspenders. And so I cut out two strips that were four and a half inches wide and one strip that was six and a half inches wide. Now that we have our short pieces, I'm going to assemble this pretty much the same way you assemble any pair of shorts, by taking one front piece and one back piece, putting them pretty side to pretty side, and sewing them down these two sides here. And now that we have two of these pieces, I'm going to take one and turn it right side out. And then I'm going to put it inside of the one that is inside out. And then I'm going to pin them together and sew them around this circular edge here. And then we can turn this right side out and we have achieved shorts. And from here, I think the first thing I'm going to do to them is add the little ruffle at the bottom because honestly, that's the part I'm most excited about. And I think I'm just going to use this trim to make my elastic casing. And I'm going to turn these to the wrong side and mark out a line that is three inches away from the bottom edge of the shorts all the way around. And then I'm just going to top stitch this down either side around the pant leg. And then once this is sewn, I'm going to take my elastic, add a safety pin to one end of it, and then guide it through my casing. And then once this is the way that I want it, I'm just going to stitch down our elastic to hold it in place. <laughs> These look so cute already! Now I'm going to work on the waistband, and in the back of the waistband, I'm going to add some elastic so that it's easy to get these on and off. But for the main part around it, it's just going to be flat. So I'm going to put two parallel basting stitches across the top edge, stopping about this length from the back. And now I took my waistband and folded it in half and kind of marked out where I think that section will hit. So I'm going to start gathering up the top of the shorts so that it fits into that part of the waistband. And then when we get to the back where there's no ruffles, I'm just going to pin the waist straight across. And before we sew the waist to the shorts, where these two pieces meet in the back, I'm going to unpin them and sew these two pieces together pretty side to pretty side. And then I'm going to repin it and sew these pieces all the way around, but again I'm going to leave a little opening in the back where we sew these two pieces up so we can add in some elastic later. And now I'm going to take my elastic, and this is some that I actually just zigzag together because I didn't have one thick enough. And I'm going to put it through the little space that we left and stitch it down on either side where we stopped the ruffles. And then I'm just going to stretch my elastic while I'm stitching it down so that it gives it a nicer finish. And then I'm going to stitch up the little hole we left to put in the elastic. And now I'm going to add a hem around the bottom edge of these shorts. And now I'm going to make the two suspender pieces by taking this long strip folding it in half and sew it right down the center. But when we sew down the center, we're going to leave a small space so we can turn this right side out a little bit later. And once that's sewn, I'm going to take this piece and fold it in half so that the seam is down the center and then sew right across either small edge. And then we're going to turn this piece right side out through that little opening we left. And the last thing to do on these bloomers is to attach the suspenders to the shorts. 
And so I tried it on and pinned them to where they fit comfortably and now I'm just going to stitch the little buttons directly onto it to attach them together. And there we have Greg's little shorts. Okay, the very last thing I have to make for Greg is his little collar because I don't have a shirt that has a Peter Pan collar. So I'm just going to whip up a detachable one really quickly. Um, and for this, I'm actually going to use my own pattern that I made a little while ago for my detachable collar video. Um, but I actually don't have a printer here yet. So I'm just going to take one of the ones I've already made with that pattern and just trace it. But I'm just going to whip that up really quickly. And here are our finished over the garden wall costumes. Honestly, I have been wanting to do these costumes for literal years now, so I'm just really happy that I finally got around to it and that my brother agreed to do this with me. I think they both turned out really good and they were really accurate to the actual cartoon and my brother had a lot of fun playing in his cape and I'm just in love with these bloomers, I really am. I was also kind of amazed that I actually got my teeth pot to stay on my head nicely. I had to use a headband to kind of like help squeeze it on, but it actually ended up holding fairly nicely. I know I said that this week was going to be the other Met Gala look and I'm sorry, I just kind of forgot that Halloween was coming, so that video will hopefully be coming out next week. But I hope you guys all have a really happy Halloween and have some fun times and eat good candy. Because honestly, you are never too old to go trick-or-treating. Like, I still want to go trick-or-treating, and yes, I am 20 years old. But trick-or-treating is fun, so I'm going to do it. So I encourage you guys to do the same if you also love trick-or-treating. But just thank you guys all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys next week with another video. Bye!